Welcome everybody, this is Gregor and I am back with another refactoring video. This time we're going to take a look at the Expense Report Refactoring Kata. It is a nice little refactoring kata because of its smaller size. So you can finish it in, I don't know, maybe a couple hours even. And if you're doing a coding dojo at your company, it really fits in a day or even less than that. And this is pretty nice, I think. Let's take a look at what the code is doing. It is a class that has a, a print report method and it takes a list of expenses. And then it prints the expenses. So first it prints uh, a header information where it says expenses and the current date. Then it walks over all the expenses in the list and it checks whether they are of a certain type. If they are of these types, then it will add to the meal expenses the amount of the expense. So probably these are meal types. The dinner and the breakfast. Uh, then it will grab the name of the expense and the name seems to be coming from the expense type. And then it is doing some calculation based on the type and the amount where it checks whether the amount is bigger than a certain limit. And if it is, it sets the meal over expenses marker. So I guess this is the marker. If, if it's a meal and if it's over a certain limit, it will print this marker into the report. And then it prints the whole line with the name, the amount and this marker into the report. It also adds the amount to the total. And in the end, it prints the meal expenses that it has calculated and the total expenses. The challenge in this kata is to add a new expense type called lunch and it should have a limit of 2000. Now if we take a look what we would have to change to make this work, there are a lot of places in the code that we would have to change. First we would have to add a new expense type, lunch, then we would have to change this condition. Then we would have to change this switch statement to add the lunch type. And we would have to change this condition to add our lunch type and the amount to make this work. With the current design, I would have to walk over the whole code base and make some relatively risky changes just to add this single expense type. So we need to refactor this code first and reduce the scope of change. For this particular change, I should not have to deal with more than one class and maybe a couple lines. It should be fairly easy to add the new type. So let's first make the change easy and then make the easy change. But in order to refactor this code, we need some tests so that we are confident that we don't break anything. So let's start by adding some tests. In order to test this code, I'm going to use the approval test framework, which should make this fairly easy. So let me add the dependency first. This is approval tests, the scope of tests. And we can close the POM again. Since this is really the only method we can call, we are going to just call this method in our test. And then we have to verify what the output is what is print to system out. And there are several ways to accomplish this. I will use a trick to rewrite system out to my own output stream and approval tests will help me with that. So let me create a new test for this and a test method. I don't yet know the name, so I will keep it this way. And I like to have it open side by side. First, I want to rewrite the system out. And I can do this with the approval utilities. And this will provide me with an output stream. I will just call it output. And then I will 
instantiate the expense report. Put it in a variable and I would like to invoke the print report. But what do I pass? Let's start with a very simple thing, an empty list. Dot empty list. And as a result, it should print something. And I would like to verify if whatever is printed is correct. So for that, I will call approvers.verify my output and see how it goes. But first, I should provide a better name. This is important for the approver test framework. I will show you why later. What are we doing here? We are really printing an empty report. So I will call this empty report maybe. And now let's run this test. So what happened here is the approver framework shows me this diff. On the left hand side is the result that I received from the test, the output. And on the right hand side, I have an empty file. This is because for now I did not approve any of the outputs. And first I have to make this manual decision that the output is correct. So how I do this, I just move the current result on the left hand side to the right side and then I save it. Let me show you how this looks in in my explorer. So in the same package as the test, I will have a new file called approved. And this is the one that I chose to approve. And this is now part of my test. And I, I want to commit this even to Git. Right. So this is my expectation that I expect as a result of this test. And the received is just the actual result or the current result that I get, which might not be correct. So this is not important and it will not be added to my to my version control system. So I'm, I'm safe to delete it even. So let's jump back in, into the test. Now that I have approved a result, I can run the test again and it will now check against my recent approved result. So let's run the test again. And the test fails again. Uh, I know that the test fails because it shows me the diff. If it didn't fail, I wouldn't see the diff. The difference here is from the output that I, I approved, I have a different time than in the one I received. So why is that? This is because when I take a look at the code, in the header, it always prints the current date. So this is a problem because this means my output will be different on every occasion I run the test. But I need a consistent output to be able to verify my test. How do I solve this problem? There are many ways to do this. And one, I, one way I will choose now is to push up the dependency. I will just introduce a new parameter for the date and I will tick this box so that it uses a method overloading. This means that yes, it will, it will add a new parameter, but it will also keep the old method. Let me show you. Now, if this was another language, it would look a little bit different. Maybe you would have something like a default value for the date parameter so that you can call the method with just one or two parameters, but it's really, it's, it's just the same. So now that I have this method, I should be able to provide a date and I will just provide a date with a value of zero maybe so that this is consistent. Now let's run the test again. Now you see that I get the very first possible date and I will send it over and approve it. 
And from this moment on, when I run the test again, it should be working consistently. Yes, so now we're in the green, the test works. And this is because we are always using the same date that I am setting here in my test. Now let's commit our first test. I hope you liked the video and in the next one we're going to continue this kata and test the code even further. I'm Gregor, see you next time.